Well, more or less, it's done. It actually comes out into the room a little bit farther than the other one did. The other one had stuff a little more in line, which is just poor planning on my part. My copper lines did not want to straighten. They didn't work hard, I guess, with the vibration. So I'll put that on the list of stuff to buy. We're going to let it run like that. When my belt vibrates, it rubs just a tiny bit. That, that, that tiny bit ain't going to matter or anything. I guess we're ready. Oh, I also did <clears throat> change out all the oil in it, which is pretty ugly. Of course, the last time I changed the oil is when I ran it out of oil. So what I did this time was fill it with 1030. I think the compressor is supposed to have 30 weight. I put 1030 in it because it's what's on the shelf. And then I, I let her pump with all the plugs out for, I don't know, five minutes or so. And I tip the whole unit over, which I've never been able to do, and let it let it drain out. And then I refilled it. So I figured we'll let her go for a bit and then do it again. I never have checked or cleaned that at particular air filter, but considering the old air filter was a, a sponge, I figured that one's a lifetime filter. It's not that dirty down here. So yeah, there there she is in all of her clunky and elegance, but functional. <laughs> There's something missing. There's something missing. God, what is missing? What's missing? Ooh. I didn't put the pressure relief valve back in it. <laughs> yeah, I gotta do that. So we're done. It took, uh, probably two or three times longer than I expected, even accounting for guy time. I don't know why, it's just did. Most of it was dinking around looking for parts and pieces in a small town. We have it together. We have pressure relief valve, pressure switch. There's the main tank valve. This is the end manifold from the tank. It's mounted here sideways now. My regulated pressure, unregulated pressure. So both tubes need to be remade. They are functional right now. The whole unit encroaches in the room more. It's not, it's not awesome. Um, I should have probably positioned it differently. So essentially we take up a shorter amount of space but a, a little wider amount of space. Huh? I guess we'll call that a net loss. Great big old valve at the bottom. Never welded to the tank itself. I, I welded to these extra flanges but I never welded to the tank itself, so the pressure vessel should be good. I'm going to make one concession to common sense. I'm going to go ahead and turn it on and then let the, let the unit cycle and shut off and see what it does. It should be fine. I mean, when I got this tank, it was half full propane. And liquid propane is at a pressure of quite a bit more than this little compressor is going to put out. Well, should be completely fine, and I did not modify the pressure vessel in any way. It should be perfectly fine forever, basically. Drain valve is in the dead bottom of it. It cannot collect any water anywhere. It's all going to go into my piping in the bottom. So, yeah, yeah, we should be, we should be in a high cotton, I suppose. Now, the old tank had that pinhole. It's right there. Surprisingly small, but I noticed... I noticed that I get a depressingly sort of funkish sound uh, in a line that runs right over through here. 
And what I was really kind of surprised at was just the sheer amount of rust and erosion that I saw in some of my lines. Okay, this is the drain line. I don't remember if I put that in or if I was reusing the drain line and valve that was on the tank when I originally got it. But you can see how much it has eroded away that. It's almost like it was used in some sort of caustic environment. Didn't happen with me. It's just been an air compressor for me. But yeah, I don't know. We should be good. We should be good. Even the most ardent safety Nancy's shouldn't be able to see anything too bad here. No welding in the pressure vessel. Yeah, it's an old tank that had passed its expiration date, but I flushed and inspected it down inside. Let's turn her on. Let it cycle. Thirty-five on the nose, bleed down, bled off. Surprising, uh, got a little bit of heat this far down into the unit. I mean, obviously the the copper. That's the purpose of that big copper coil was to just sort of vent off some of that heat. But cool, cool, cool. The way the bleed off valve works is this has got what's called the unloader. So when this unit is off it vents air out of here. This has got a one-way check valve. What ends up happening is this bleeds the pressure off on this side of the check valve. The check valve then closes. So when your air compressor starts, well, it's not going to start right now, but when your air compressor starts, it's starting not against tank pressure, but against no pressure in these lines. And when it finally builds up enough pressure, then it goes past the one-way check valve. You know, when you see cheap compressors and you go to turn them on and they just hum and they struggle to start, it's because it doesn't have an unloader. I'm sure you can buy that part and retrofit. What do you think, Buster Bear? Wow. It's tall, huh? Now you gotta stay away from the old greasy one behind you. But that, whoop, whoop, you gotta stay back. Your mommy will get both of us. You see that little rusty spot right next to the hole? That's what killed it. The whole bottom of that tank was rotten. And any time it could have gone <coughs> kaboom. It would have been really bad. That's why we stopped it. That's why we stopped it.